Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk with you about the exhibition I visited recently, curated by Gabriela Ruiz, formerly Leather Papi on the Gram. Its title is Elixir, hosted at Tlaloc Studios in South Central. I went opening night and certainly found that the community showed up. I want to start first with the exhibition's curatorial message. With its association to magical, transformative, and healing properties, the concept of Elixir takes center stage in this debut curatorial show. Our aim is to reimagine the art world by showcasing an elixir-like remedy that can bring about profound change. In doing so, we recognize and elevate femmes and gender non-conforming individuals as the driving force behind this transformative movement. Elixir serves as a powerful platform, amplifying the voices of artists and allowing their unique perspectives to shape the narrative. By delving into their artistic lens, we gain insight into how they perceive the world, experience life, and express themselves. Through this exploration, Elixir becomes a catalyst for showcasing their exceptional talent and shedding light of their distinctive experiences. This exhibition is a testament to the long-awaited remedy we have all been searching for. A refreshing antidote that breaks free from the confines of traditional art. It not only challenges existing norms, but also celebrates the voices and creative visions of the exceptionally gifted artists." End quote. Certainly important given the fact that I'm currently sick, so let's take the elixirs concocted by these 22 artists. As with the previous review, I want to highlight works that caught my attention and add some of the artists' similar work, because in a gallery show like this, the information is a bit hard to track as I couldn't find a physical record of the show. So what I want to do is perform something similar to what the gallery is showing, a combination of the artist's work and then a social media deep dive, since the only records I could find were scrolling on their own pages. First is Crystal Perez, whose watercolor titled After Cake captures a contemplative moment after consumption. Love the small detail given to each brick and the desk. They feel like landscapes dug into their own plane, to my understanding, Perez is starting the watercolor journey, having more practice in sculpture and performance. I enjoy how multi-material Perez can be, even incorporating food. Perez is a frequent collaborator with Carla Ekaterin Canseco, a fellow artist in the show. Here are some records of their performances together. Perez explores placemaking, belonging, historical narratives, and while this is one of their earlier watercolor works on display, I'm looking forward to what Perez cooks up next. I love bugs, I love aliens, the abject, speculative biology, and creepypastas. That makes me already predisposed to enjoy this work by Lilith Treglia. Stage name, S280F. I'm playing her music at the moment. Hope that's okay. I love the discombobulating forms, the shedding flesh, the impossible to read exoskeletons of the creatures, the reflective surface invites participation. If you check her concerts, you're in for a treat because her performances look like this. And I encourage listening more to the music if you enjoy a thrill of the unknown and beyond human. This 5x7 inch work titled Billy's Hug is by Shaina McCoy and the brushwork is thick. Here's a close up to see the waves of the oil you could just surf on. According to the artist, this is a portrait of her aunt who transitioned several years ago who started visiting McCoy in her dreams where Billy ran to give McCoy a hug so tight that she could smell perfume. McCoy captures people's likenesses in potent impasto, and the subjects are her family. Though at first glance the faces may seem erased, could it be the haze of memory formation? Could it be so we can focus on someone's presence without face details? No matter what, stunning work in such a small scale. A faint print behind glass in an illuminated space makes a tough recording but that pushes you to check out Ricky Wright's print and ceramic work in person. Here, of profiles enshrined in vases. I'm unaware whether these are photographs made for the work by the artist or part of the archival backlog Wright has available, as most of her work deals in personal and historical archives. We might get a glimpse into the process in these social media posts, but this artist's catalog is so extensive Check her website for more of the excellence in Wright's printmaking, documentary, and ceramics dealing with community and kinship, especially among people of color. Her films are amazing and quite contemplative. A clear connection I see in material curation is the presence of ceramics, something I'm completely lacking knowledge in. All the ceramics in the show are so good. From Wright's small bottles to this mischievous angelic duo called Angel Reflections by Christine Stormberg. 
Although cracks in the kiln might be potentially dangerous, I do enjoy the cracks across the left angel's shoulder, almost like a bandolier. According to Stormberg's Instagram, her divine being imagines a welcoming space of radical embodiment, where the divine feminine and the soft pleasures of the body can freely flourish, end quote. They're so animated and fun, just hot girl summer all around. From there we go to this cutie, titled Tender Ladybug Holding a Heart as Big as Its Sneakers, created by Alake Schilling. For those who wear their heart on their sleeve, here's a whole new manner of looking at it. Those bulging eyes filled with wonder and possibly about to burst into tears of joy or sadness, they make me want to hold this little buddy. And keeping the vibe of welcoming spaces, Schilling's work all make me wish Toontown from Roger Rabbit was real because check out these goofy homies just out and about, hanging out with their cartoon friends. I love the colors and proportions of them all. Look at this charming snake. Someone I've mentioned already, but now placing into the curatorial loop of being part of the ceramics crew, Carla e Caterin Canseco showing here the ceramic amphora which has Sincera on the back. Love how the guts of the ceramic are exposed and graffitied handles show a pop in color. Much of Canseco's work looks scavenged, gathering materials indiscriminately, composing together friends to keep along the way. Some of the works Canseco calls material poems and many, if not most, feature lovely animal friends. Sometimes even the artist embodies them in performances. Speaking of lovely animal friends, these really caught my singular eye plastered on a canvas almost as if looking through a mirror. These works might be a part of a larger series by Anima Correa titled Espejitos, Little Mirrors in Spanish. Unfortunately, my eyes are not as beautiful as captivating as these. Suspended in the cuttlefish or squid eyes are a little glimpse into the modern world, asking what if sea dwellers were witnesses to the man-made horrors beyond our comprehension. A helicopter in one eye, Hal, police lights, a bomb, the interminable grid of cyberspace, you name it. Look at these intimate floral moments, the garden gang here. Drinking shimmering dew from a calla lily from the hands of Nicolette Mishkan. This electric and resplendent fairy checking in on their friend, stiff blue-eyed grass, flower people yell at me if I'm wrong, from Miranda Beek to this charged and pierced long stem calla lily moment, importantly not adjacent to the previous one, this pair here is provided by Kelly Shami, bringing together the metalwork of a piercing to the small metalwork that mimics the forms of flowers themselves by Tamara Santibanez. We can link materially and conceptually to the illuminated neon and industrial work by Ginger Q that greets you upon entering, and then bounce to the metallic and reflective work by Liz Lee seen here. In the more explicit enchanting ensemble, we have this stunning black and blue piece titled Desire by Terrell Villiers and the smaller scale full frontal oil piece by Ireland Wisdom who is topping this mime-like piece. Mas Guerrero made these fun digital collages pop out from both the ground in Rising Dead Manor and the wall with this car driven by wild ones. I totally see a conversation happening across the room with these funky feline friends frolicking forever through the field of flowers. The first from Lanea Billingsley, who also provided the flyer and logo for the exhibition. And the second from Mia Scarpa with a growl and some flora above them, almost like a crown. And this duo from Camille Sulat is a hazy pairing. This one with an absolutely relatable name titled Ostracized for Giving Bad Vibes. These two are ink on brushed aluminum and the tender moment shared in the hazy background seen through spider webbing recalls all the things I love, hazy, dewy, arachnidy. Pair them next to this equally inscrutable photograph of the LA streets from Guadalupe Rosales and you've got yourself a great combination. Lastly, let's be sent off through Gabi Abrao's lens of ghostly landscape chairs and table, a site where anything may happen in that desert. Here's a nice send off for Elixir. I hope you enjoyed a glimpse into an exhibition with such amazing artists that is sure to be a well-needed potion to soothe all our maladies. Elixir is curated by Gabriela Ruiz and is hosted at Tlaloc Studios from now until possibly mid-August. Generally, these gallery shows run for two to six weeks or so. It's all dependent. If I find something more solid, I'll edit that in the description or something. Ah, here's my ride. Um, please check out these artists' individual web pages, their social medias. 
They are all doing very special things. Check out all of their works that I did not show you here. This has been a fun time. All right, this has been Soser's Art Review. See you next time. Oh, also, by the way, uh, no restroom review this time. It was two porta potties. I didn't film it, but I'll see you next time.